This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The pastors of the Crow River East Circuit are pleased to lead you in a special service of worship and praise celebrating the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just before Jesus ascended, one of the last things he said to his disciples was, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And with that in mind, the theme for our service today is, be a witness for Christ. Our opening hymn is, draw us to thee. God bless your worship with us today. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you establish your faithfulness in heaven itself. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. God, God will bless us and, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, King over heaven and earth, we gather to give you praise as you ascend into heaven. Having accomplished your work of salvation, we adore you. Bless us who gather in your name and fill us with the assurance that you will return someday soon to take us to be with you in the eternal home that you have prepared for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Burdened with guilt and overwhelmed with sorrow because of our many sins, let us humbly fall before God's throne of grace 
and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father, we confess to you that we are sinful creatures. We have disobeyed your laws, ignored your precepts, and push aside your commands. We have failed to be faithful witnesses and missed the opportunities to proclaim your truth to others. Forgive us for our many sins. Have mercy on us. Cleanse us with the blood of Jesus, our ascended Lord. Dear repentant child, Jesus Christ lived a perfect life, died a sacrificial death, rose victorious from the grave, and now has ascended into heaven, where he reigns over every living thing. Through his atoning work, atoning work, you have been freed from sin, death, and the devil. You have the hope of eternal life, and you can be assured that Jesus Christ will return to take you to join him in glory. Rejoice in this good news. Sing his praises now and forevermore. Shout aloud for Jesus Christ has forgiven your sins for his namesake. We continue with hymn 169, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. lesson for today is taken from 2 Kings chapter 5. As Jesus, our ascended Lord, sits on his throne ruling, ruling all is the Lord. We see how he works oftentimes in the background. Take note as you listen to, to Naaman, but also you see this, this servant girl who was captured by this man, and yet because she knew the Lord was the one ruling all, she continued to care for souls. May we too Remember the Lord who rules wherever we are. Our concern now for the Lord's will in our lives, where we are, and especially as we witness even at work. We hear this lesson. Now Naaman was commander of the army of king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left 
taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me? When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more than when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? And so he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. The name and all, and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. This is the word of our Lord. We continue with the first verse of hymn 566. We are all one in mission. Our second lesson today is found in Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Jesus healed a man of demon possession, and instead of inviting him to follow Jesus, Jesus told him to go back to his hometown and tell everyone what Jesus had done for him. In the same way, we want to share with our neighbors the good news that Jesus has freed us from the power of the devil. They sailed to the region of the Gerizines, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into them, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. 
and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerizines asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of our God. We join in verse 2. lesson comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 8, beginning with verse 26. Have you ever had things not go quite according to plan? Or maybe God laid an opportunity in front of you that you just did not plan for. That's what happened to one of Jesus' disciples, a man named Philip. The angel of the Lord told him to go to a certain road, but he didn't tell Philip what exactly was going to happen when he got there. Keeping his eyes and his ears open, Philip soon became aware of an opportunity that God had placed in front of him to witness to an Ethiopian Enoch. And herein, God reminds us that we should always be ready to witness, because we never know the opportunities that might arise. We read from Acts chapter 8, beginning with verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian Enoch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The Spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The Enoch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from the earth? The Enoch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture, and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the Enoch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. These are the words of our Lord. We join in singing verse 3.
is no message more important that Jesus Christ has come to fulfill the scriptures. He lived, died, rose from the dead, and even now has ascended into heaven. As God's church, it's our mission to proclaim those, that wonderful message to the very ends of the earth. And that's what Jesus tells us here in these verses from Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Our service will continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 558, Christ High Ascended.
fellow saints of God, what is most precious to you? More than that, what would you consider to be sacred in your life? Is there a person, is there an object, is there something that, that just rises to the top that has the greatest of importance so special to you? Maybe nothing's really coming to mind. Um, maybe consider this. What, if you lost it, would devastate you? What is it that is, is so precious that you couldn't even put a price on it? You'd have to truly say it is, it is priceless. Some things starting to, to come to mind now? I'm guessing so. But before we talk specifics, before we hear what, what perhaps those things are that, that rise to the top in, in your heart, let me ask a few more questions and maybe test your commitment to that thing. You're, you're telling us that, that this is, is so important and, it, and it's very precious to you. Okay, then that should mean you're spending all kinds of money on it, right? I mean, if you were to do an expense report, it's going to be right there at the top of the list. Or maybe um, if I were to ask your friends, your neighbors, your family members, what is most important to you, they'd be able to rattle it off because, yes, you talk about it all the time. Or maybe if we did a, a little time analysis, we'd be able to see that that's where you spend the majority of your time. So is that all matching up? What you thought was a top priority, what you thought was so precious to you, does that also now match up with, with your real commitment to it? So what is it that you feel is so precious? What is it that is, is so sacred to you? Is it an, an object of some kind, maybe a, a home, a piece of property, a collection of something that you have, or, or maybe your... Um, your financial portfolio? Is it a person? Is it your parent? Is it your spouse? Is it your children or, or maybe your friends? Or is it something a little more spiritual, your church, your faith, your Savior Jesus, the hope of an eternal life in heaven, His holy word? What is it that rises to the top? As much as I would love to be able to say that on my lists, oh, absolutely, it was God and His Word. You bet, top of the list every time. Can't say that. I think my wife beat him out in a couple categories. I think my job probably beat him out in a few others. But what about for you? What is it that you view as so precious, so sacred? It is my prayer that this evening the Holy Spirit works through the entire inspired word of the Apostle Peter and convinces you to put Christ at the top of every list. Convinces you to, to set apart Christ as Lord in, in your heart. And not only that, I pray that once he has convinced you that it's obvious to the world, that having convinced you that, that he is Lord of your heart, that that you are moved to be a witness. That it is clear that Christ reigns in your heart. The, the one simple verse that we want to consider um, this evening is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Now, I asked before what you consider to be sacred, and I, I use that word intentionally because that's really what Peter is encouraging us to do with regard to our Savior. He, he says, set apart Christ as Lord, and, and the word that he is translated set apart is the same word that we find in the Lord's Prayer when we say, hallowed be your name. It's talking about making holy, setting apart to be truly special, deserving all praise and honor and glory. It's also interesting that one of the titles that Peter uses in these words um, brings to mind that same concept, the fact that, that he is the Christ. Right? The word Christ and its Old Testament counterpart, the word Messiah, highlighting that, that this is the anointed one, this is the holy one, the one that has been set apart 
for a holy task, that of being the Savior of the world. Now, knowing that helps us to then answer a question that naturally comes to mind anytime somebody tells us to do something. Why? Why should I make Christ my Lord? Why should I set him apart? Why would I do that? Who, who is he that I would want to do that? Now, you might think, well, that, isn't that answer pretty obvious? Why we would want to do that? Then I ask you, why wasn't he at the top of your list before? See, it's one thing to know Jesus, to have this head knowledge of Jesus, to know that he's the Christ, he's the Lord of all. And it's another thing to let that translate into a life of service committed to him, a life where we are, are bold witnesses for him in all the world. And again, that's my prayer, that as we consider these words, we realize, that he is absolutely our Lord, and that he is deserving of all of our praise. He is deserving of being set apart, and that we are moved to be a witness. So why? Why set apart Christ as Lord? Well, first of all, what does it mean to be, be Lord? Well, it means to be master, means to be ruler, means that this is the one who is the final authority, the, the final say, the last word. And why would we want to set apart Christ to be that person? Simply put, because he set us apart. Just think of what our God has done for us. In fact, go take the time to read through the earlier chapters of this same letter, and, and Peter tells you just what it means that we have been set apart, just what it means that, that our God has, has set us apart. Go all the way back to the, chapter 1, verse 1, he calls us the elect. We've been chosen. He says we've been given a, a new life. And then you go to chapter 2, verse 9, and we read these amazing words. He says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Did, did you hear it? Did you pick up on it? A holy nation. It's the same word that's used there as well. And, and what does that mean? God handpicked us, chose us to be his own. Just ponder that for a moment, what it means that he did that, how it happened that he did that. You know, our God from all eternity chose us. And of course, then he created a world for us to be born into and to live in and to enjoy. It was all about mankind. It's why he brought everything into existence. His plan, his goal was to spend eternity with his creation. Even after sin came in and, and ruined it, didn't change his plan at all. He promised a savior so that that relationship could be mended, that there could be peace once again, and we could be with our God forever. And how would that happen? Well, he promised a savior. He promised to send his only son. Think about how challenging that would have been for our God to do that, the kind of love that he displayed. I, I mentioned before that maybe your children rise to the top of what's so precious to you. So would you be willing to sacrifice one of them? Would you be willing to sacrifice one for, for a dear loved one? How about for your worst enemy? And it isn't that what our Heavenly Father did? Sacrificed His own Son for us? For the people of this world? And then, Jesus did come. He was perfectly obedient, something we desperately needed Him to do because we can't, we can't obey God's law perfectly. And we needed him also to take the guilt and the shame and endure the punishment for our sins. And he was willing to do that too. He took it all on himself and he went to that cross. He paid the price and he died. On top of that, he, he didn't stay dead. He came back to life. The tomb is empty. The glorious resurrection so that we might also be raised someday. Again, the goal is still to be with us forever, and so he needed to rise again so that we could be raised too and be with him forever. And not only did he accomplish all of this work, but then he made it personal. Again, he chose us. He set us apart. He sent his Holy Spirit into our hearts, to work through this very message, that, that fulfilled message that he accomplished. 
to declare us forgiven, loved, blood-bought, heirs of glory, His dear children. All of that work, the fact that Jesus was willing to stand in the courtroom of God Himself, be sentenced to death, endure that punishment, so that we would be declared not guilty, all of that is ours, becomes our personal possession because of what Jesus has done. This is why we set Him apart as Lord. Because of this great love that He was willing to do all of this for us. And just consider the impact of of that on our lives. Are you afraid? With Jesus, having set us apart, being in our hearts, being in our lives, we have nothing to fear. All sin has been taken away. We don't have to fear death. We, We don't have to fear health issues. We don't have to fear financial issues because our God promises, I'm right here with you. I will take care of everything. He meets our every need to know that we have been set apart means we don't have to keep comparing ourselves to others wondering oh i wonder what they're going to think we we don't have to keep working so hard trying to make a name for ourselves no jesus gives us a brand new identity forgiven redeemed holy sanctified set apart for god this is why we set him apart as Lord in our hearts. Now, being convinced that he absolutely deserves first place in our hearts, Peter also goes on and says, well, here's what that can look like. When we are moved by the love of our God to put him first and keep him first, knowing what he's done for us, he says, now, be a witness. Be ready anytime the opportunity comes to share this amazing truth, this amazing Savior, the hope that he gives you with others. This is what Peter said. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. So he calls on us with Christ reigning and ruling in our hearts as Lord to let it be known. To make him that priority in every aspect of our lives. To be ready whether that's an intentional opportunity that that we work to create with somebody or whether it just falls in our lap like we heard happened with Philip. He says, be ready. Be ready to proclaim this this amazing truth. Now, before you get all lined up to be able to offer all your excuses as to why you can't do this and and why you're not qualified to do this, um, go back to that verse we mentioned before. Back in chapter 2, where Peter reminded us that, that we are a, a holy nation and a people belonging to God. Do you know how that verse continues? This is what he says. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He did it with purpose. He did it for a reason. That we might be his witnesses. That we might praise his holy name. That we might tell others of what Christ has done for us. Not only that. Why are you tuning into this video? We're here to celebrate the ascension of Jesus. Do you understand the significance of that event? This is the the start, this is the birth of the Holy Christian or the Christian church here on earth. Jesus finished his work, and now he was handing over the reins, the leadership of that church to his disciples, to to the church of, of all time, you and me as well. And he doesn't do that without equipping us to do it. He when he before he went into heaven, he said, Go, make disciples but I'm going to be with you. He taught and he trained his disciples just as he trains us. He gives us his holy word. And really, the fact that he has set us apart, the fact that he's called us to be his children, that's what equips us. And now he calls us to go and do this as well. The reality is this isn't optional. This isn't something, well, okay, I'll I'll sign up to do this now. No, this is who we are as children of God, as those who have been set apart by God. Okay, so what does that look like? We have Christ ruling in our hearts as Lord. We have been equipped. We have the call to to go and do this, to be witnesses. So what does it look like? Well, Peter adds that simple phrase, do so with gentleness and respect. Really, it's just a matter of proclaiming and sharing our own faith journey with somebody else. 
And we do that humbly, acknowledging we didn't earn this spot as, as a holy and precious child of God. No, he, God gave that to us as a free gift. This was a gift of his grace. And we share that, that simple truth with others, how humbling that is that God would choose us. Or maybe we're, we're pretty transparent with them to help them understand, I messed this up too. Share the struggles that we have, the idols that, that we worship, that they're certainly going to be able to relate to. We do it with, with gentleness and respect, Peter says, that, that we realize that they are precious to Jesus. And we do that by demonstrating they're precious to us too. We want them to know the Savior. We want to share with them how during our difficult times, we go to Jesus. And how he helped us during, during that loss of a loved one. Or how he got us through that, that health crisis. Or how he's right there to assure us that he will provide when we, when we lost our job. We can share those same stories as we relate the hope that we have. The sure and certain hope of an eternal life in heaven. This is how it's done. It's just simply sharing our own story to let them know what a blessed life it is to be a child of God. To be set apart for him. So my fellow saints of God, you have been set apart by Christ. You have been made holy through the blood of Christ. Now, set apart Christ as Lord in your heart. Be a witness for him. Go and proclaim this glorious truth in all the world. It's what you've been equipped to do. It's what you've been called to do. Now do it, knowing that he is always at the top of our list. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are, are truly humbled when we consider what you have done for us, that you've set us apart, you've declared us to be holy and, and your saints forgiven and redeemed, Lord, may that truth move us to be powerful witnesses in this world. Every opportunity you place before us, help us to take advantage of it and simply point them to you. We ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. We continue our service with the singing of our next hymn. Brothers and sisters, let us join our hearts in prayer. Blessed Jesus, you ascended to the right hand of your Father's majesty, power, and glory, and now reign as eternal King of kings and Lord of lords. 
We praise you for your victory over sin, death, Satan, and hell. O Ascended Prophet, equip your church to proclaim the precious gospel message of God's love for all the world. Give courage to our hearts, power to our words, and success to our efforts. O Ascended High Priest, represent us before the Father as his own dear children and heirs. Defend us against Satan's every accusation. Ask for the Father's rich blessings in our everyday lives. Plead for his mercy and grace on our behalf. O Ascended King, direct the affairs of governments and nations that they may serve the best interest of your church. You are our Lord, Master, and King. As the disciples lifted their eyes to watch your ascension, so lift our eyes daily to look for your coming again in glory. Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We conclude with hymn 562, I Love to Tell the Story. <laughs> 